Who know where I want to start? Brothers, brother uh, Killian. No, that's Deacon Abiel. I like that. That's not where I start though. Sirach six and eighteen. Thank you. There we go. All right. Sirach chapter six verse eighteen. Sirach chapter six verse eighteen. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So the Lord said, gather instruction in your youth. Meaning while you're young in the truth. Of course, while you're, you know, while you're a child, four, five, six, you, you know, and growing up. But spiritually, we come in as truth as newborn babes. So the Lord said, what? My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. Uh -huh. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So that when you come up, become old in this truth, five, six, ten, fifteen, twenty plus years down the line, you have some wisdom to pass down to the brothers and sisters that are coming up under you. That's the reason why you go through trials, tribulations, afflictions, suffering, whatever the case is. All that stuff you got to learn from. All that stuff get, builds experience like you read in Romans 5. All right? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, my first question. What makes us holy? Because the Lord told Moses to speak to Israel, right? So what makes us holy? He said above all the other nations on the planet. What makes us holy? Brother Killian. Let's get a mic in the front. Grab the mic. Stand up. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, the, the law makes us holy. Okay. Sound good. Romans, uh, what, 7 and 12? Get that? Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So what makes us a holy people is the Lord giving us his laws, specifically what we're going to go over being a dress code, all right? Uh, Psalms 147 and 19. Psalms chapter 147 and 19. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto I'll Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not done so with any nation. Okay, so somebody explain that. Don't everybody raise your hand at once. Oh, don't overwhelm me, please. Brother Daniel. Daniel or David. Brian. Brian, I'm sorry. The D-O-B, I'm sorry. Brother Brian. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, Brother Brian Shalom. Brother Brian. Uh, it sounds like he's saying he, he hasn't. He hasn't given his laws to any other uh, any other nation, like the Edomites, and uh, only only to Israel. Right, exactly, exactly. So give me some laws that he only gave to Israel. Oh well, uh, not not put baldness on your head. You know, Numbers uh, fifteen, verses thirty. You know, thirty-eight through forty. Right. Um, not to eat pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster, mm -hmm. or catfish. Exactly. Uh, Dietary laws, right. Sabbath. Attire, keeping the Sabbath, right. Know who, Absolutely. Know who you do good to. Absolutely. Absolutely. All praises. Thank you, sir. Read that again. Psalms 147. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments. Slow down. And his statute, his statutes. Read it from the top. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He did not deal like that with any other nation, like Brother Brian said. The Lord didn't give his laws to the so-called white man, to Esau, nobody else. Now, in our kingdom, we're going to enforce our laws on all the other nations. Dietary, apparel, all that. We're going to enforce all of that. But the Lord judged us for keeping the laws. Chapter 17, verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge. The them is talking about Israel. He gave us what? Knowledge. Uh -huh. And the law of life for inheritance. And he gave us the laws as a heritage. Here in captivity, Babylon the Great and everywhere else, we think that our heritage is 
Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, give me something else, Juneteenth, 4th of July, uh, dealing with the dress, right, New Year's, dealing with the dress code, pants, women wearing pants, uh, daughters wearing pants, cuckoo, cuckoo, Koofy, oh, Koofy's, Koofy, yeah, uh, what's that brother, uh, brother Shine, brother Shine, that rapper, mm -hmm. they wear that stuff, they think that that's a part of their heritage, but God said, the laws is our heritage, Passover, uh, 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 Feast of Dedication, so on and so forth, that's a part of our heritage, and us, in our repentance, we're coming back to what our true heritage looks like, specifically how we dress, how we conduct ourselves in our attire, with our attire. The message that we convey with our attire. The spirit that we put on in our attire. All right, Psalms 106, verse 35. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. But were mingled among the heathen, learned their... Read it again. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. So the Israelites were mingled, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, taken from the west coast of Africa, brought over here to the Americas, and we did what? W were mingled among the heathen. We were mingled amongst the other nations. And learned their works. And learned their works. We learned their works generation after generation after. After generation, we've learned the works of the other nations. Us being here in Babylon the Great, specifically Esau, we've learned his works. So for the men, for example, we've been taught and we've, we've learned that if you go clean shaven, that means you're a man of, of stature, of dignity. That means you got a good paying job. That means you got benefits, right? You're a swell guy. Just in that word you said, clean shaven. So if we have a beard on, then it means we dirty. Right. And that's what they convey. Oh, you, he, this dude, he a bum. He, you know, why he got this beard on his face, man? What's going on with this dude, man? You're supposed to go clean shaven. But that's what we've learned here in America. That's the mindset that we have here in America. And I know, especially when you're first coming in, some brothers would be embarrassed you go on your nice corporate job, you see all your coworkers, they all clean shaven in the office. Hey, how you doing, Jimbo? You doing good? And he got the he got the fresh cut or whatever. And then you come in, you line, you know, you lined up, you groomed up and everything, but he looking at you like, hey, what's going on, Tyrone? What's that on your face, buddy? Yeah. I mean, we don't really do that here in the office. I mean, you you know, you gotta get a little cleaned up, especially for your interview, guy. Yes, sir. Yeah, because um, who's that? Davey's not going to like that, man. He's not going to like that at all. He's going to be real mad at you, man. Mm -hmm. Might lose your job. Hey, get to Zondervan. Because you, you said something that rang a bell. You said dignity. You, the, um, Esau has changed what dignity looks like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm has conformed our minds to their um, their ideology of dignity. But let's see what historians know that the Bible records. You found it? Beard, a badge of manly dignity. Mm. Manly dignity. A beard is what ha gives a man his dignity, not not the bald face. That's opposite of what God created. I, I ask brothers all the time, why would the Lord put hair follicles in your face to allow hair to grow out of your face and you constantly shave it off? Why would God do that? He's not the author of confusion. He said your beard is a badge of manly dignity. And watch this, read. As a sign of mourning, it was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. Uh -huh. The Israelites mm. were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. God forbid it, Israelite men to defile and undignify themselves. God did that. He made it a law, and he said it more than once. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. 
The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man. There should be no article of clothing that your husband owns that you should be putting on. I don't care if you're running down the block. I don't, I don't care where you're going. There's nothing, the, the Lord said, there's nothing that a man owns that a woman should have on. Read the bottom part of it. For all that do so. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Lord said that's an abomination. I know we used to think it was cute in the world. Oh, I've got my husband's whatever on. I got, you know, his T-shirt on. It smelled like his cologne, whatever. That ain't cute. It's not cute. It's unlawful. It's unlawful. That's sin. All right? Now give me something for the children. Something for the children. Uh... Soldiers of Ma. Yes, sir. Yeah, give me a, give me something. Give me an example for the children. Um, a same thing. Little brothers passing down shoes to your little sisters. Uh, if they can wear them, athletic shoes or um, jackets. If they get cold or whatnot. Um, oh yeah, pajamas as well. Um, the whole nine. Uh, before I came in the truth, we was passing down stuff, you know, T-shirts and pajamas and stuff like that. Um, my daughter and my son, you know, male shoes. They both had Jordans, so he could wear them as well, too. So, you know, the whole pass down situation when it comes down to your children as well. Right. There ain't no, this is talking about cross-dressing. We don't teach our children to cross-dress. Like I said, in the, in the world, that's what we used to do. Or I remember when I was in in, uh, in daycare, this is like the fifth grade, and we had the, I don't remember what they called it. It's basically a, uh, like a, a gender swap where the, the, they had, they, they said, yo, come, come, uh, this is at Miss Nelson's house. Come, and the men were going, uh, the men, we weren't men. The young boys is going to dress like the girls. The girls come and dress like the boys. They do that stuff at school, too. They do, this, they do the same thing. They come, come in your pajamas and do all this other. You serious? You got some five-year, f- fifth graders coming in their pajamas and all this other. That's what they do. God said don't do that. Because when we mingle, mingled amongst the heathens, what did we do? We learned that that was okay. That's cute. That's fun. That's life. So just, uh, 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 Officer Shamas, you, you got me. Hey, Shalom, Officer Most High, Christ bless. And another one of the other points is that when kids be young, when they like four or five years old, they mama have their heels. When a male, the male will put on the, the, the woman heels and walk around the house, and they be like, it's a joke. So when those young men be like four or five, they don't supposed to put on their mama heels and walk around the house. Same time too, uh, when a young girl that same age, when she's a uh, Young, she'll put on her dad's boots or something like that and walk right. around the house, and we think it's funny. Oh, I got on my daddy's boots. But that's unlawful. That, that's sin. Absolutely. That's unlawful. Because then the young boy, he, he putting on his mama heels, end up like Dwayne Wade's son, rolling in a freaking pride parade. Or, Ma- or Magic, right, or Magic Johnson's son. That's what's going to happen. Now go ahead, say it on the mic. I was going to say, oh, he'll end up like Dwayne Wade himself because mm-hmm. his dad is into that stuff. Yeah, he he put on uh uh toe, na- nail polish mm-hmm. on his toes. Shaq do the same thing. I saw him on a good Good Morning America. Mm-hmm. Him and the other dude, the football player, they both getting pedicures, paint on their toes. I'm yeah. like, what the hell is this? Yeah, apparently it's a thing. Uh, rappers putting uh, fingernail polish on and everything too. I don't know. It's weird. Can we read Deuteronomy 22 and five again? Deuteronomy, just in case. The thought ain't clear yet. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that unto a man. So you got to teach your daughter. I'm talking about from young. Because even my two, almost two-year-old, she find herself trying to stick her foot in my, in my shoe. I'm not, you better get your foot out of my shoe. Snatch up out of my shoe. You don't do that. You don't do that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me get Sirach 7 and um, start at 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 23. Because the officer just said what, what your daughter do. Officer, 
Try to stick her foot in my shoe. Uh, and what happened? I snatch her up out the thing. Three. Hast thou children? Mm -hmm. And struck them and bowed down their neck from their youth. If you got children, sons, and daughters, you're supposed to instruct them while they're young. Hey, your son putting mm -hmm. his foot in, in the high heel shoe, that's swift correction. Like, your daughter want to jump into the father stuff, swift correction. Mm -hmm. Read. And bow down their neck from youth. Uh -huh. Hast thou daughters? Mm -hmm. Have a care of their body. Have a care of their body. Have a care of what they're putting on. Have a care of the clothing that, that you buy for them. Teach them how to be feminine. How to dress as a woman. Read. And show not thyself cheerful toward them. And when they do something like get in, get in daddy's uh, clothes, don't show yourself cheerful. Don't laugh at that thing. Smack them across that, that thing and tell them, get out of that. Take that off. Don't do that. That's not becoming of a, a young lady. All right? Um, give me Sirach 30 right quick. Sirach 30 and 3. Sirach 30 and 3. Three and four as well, three and four. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 3. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. So he that teacheth his son or, her, or the woman or teacheth the daughter too grieveth the enemy. So you're grieving them when you're telling them not to dress in manly things. You're grieving them telling them not to put on, not the daughter not to put on your um, shoes or your son to put on the mother's high heels, you know, or a skirt too. You know, it's the same thing. You're grieving the enemy because they want our kids to be lost and confused in Babylon. Read. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Right. They're gonna re you're going to rejoice over your son, you know, because he's not confused. He's not a confused little boy. He doesn't want to put on paint. You know, he doesn't want to put on eyelashes, have long eyelashes. He doesn't want to twitch like mama does. And that grieves the enemy because they want your son to be destroyed. They want your daughter to be destroyed. That's what this setup is all about. Destroying our nation. That's what it's about. Read. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. Right. So your kids are going to be like you, which means you have to be the proper example and raise them properly. That way, when they see your child, they're going to be like, oh, here they come. Here come that Israelite. They're just like their mama, you know, or they're just like their daddy. That grieves the enemy because they know they lost that one. They're like, dang, we didn't corrupt him. He has it. We got another avenger. I mean, that's what the next scriptures say, you know. So it grieves the enemy once we teach our children, you know, and you do that, you know, when you're putting on, ladies, when you're putting on a dress in front of your daughter, you know, you got a dress on. You know, when the trishas come out, you got your hat on. You know, the men, when the boys see you, you got your fringes on. You know, you are reading the Bible day by day. You're teaching your son to pull up his pants. You're teaching him how to be a man. You're teaching him about the Sabbath. That's what you're doing. You're teaching them how to be an Israelite. You're raising him in the proper way. And that's exactly what the nations don't want us to do. They don't want us to properly raise our kids. They want monsters. Touch, touch. Hey, get the genre real quick. Go to page 137. Uh, the reason I want to get this because I know it's a big thing when we go to camp. We bring out Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And, of course, the women be the one who mainly rebel against the pants. Even when you explain what breaches are, we all know what breaches are, right? So we use Exodus 28 to prove that. But some reason, we have people try to go around there. So if you actually go to the Zondervan Bible Dictionary and look up the definition of breaches, it's going to tell you to go see dress. So that's what we're going to read real quick, all right? Uh, go to 137. You see where it says women dress? Yes, sir. All right, read right there. Go ahead. Women, the Bible, the, comp the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 137. Women's mm -hmm. dress among the Hebrews Neither sex was permitted by Mosaic law to wear the same form of clothing mm, okay. as was used by the other. Read. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. A few articles of female clothing carried somewhat the same name and basic pattern. Somewhat 
the same basic pattern read. Yet there was always sufficient difference. A what? Difference mm -hmm. in embossing, embroidery, and needlework, mm -hmm. so that in appearance the line of demar demarcation between men and women could be readily detected. So y'all understand it, right? There was a, a very big difference between men's clothing and women's clothing. Y'all understand that? Today, they, uh, Babylon tries to merge everything to where you can't tell the difference mm -hmm. between what a man's piece of clothing or a woman's piece of clothing. That's, that's crafty counsel. Uh, read on. I want just this last paragraph. All right, uh, go quick. The woman wore long garments reaching almost to the feet uh -huh. with a girdle of silk or wool. Did Ma I say the woman wore pants? Okay, just making sure. Read. Many times having all the colors of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Often such a garment would have a fringe hanging from the waist nearly to the ankles. The lady's headdress, for example, mm -hmm. usually included some kind of a cafe or cloth or Clo cloth for covering the head. Mm -hmm. Yet the material that was in that covering was of a different quality, kind, or color from that worn by the men. Even the headdresses was different than the Mitri's. It, everything was different. The Lord made a clear distinction. This is what women's clothing looked like. This is what men's clothing looked like. That's all I wanted. Yeah, excellent point. So I want to touch back on what I think Brother Brian mentioned it about... Um, work. You know, so some sisters are going to repent and they're going to come out of you know, they, they may be working at, give me somewhere where you, you, you may be required to wear pants, like uh, well not McDonald's. Yeah, like warehouses. Yeah. Security guards, if you're doing wood, wood temp, you know, you cutting down trees or something. I don't know no sisters that cut down trees, but something like that. Something along those lines, right? If you're required to, you know, again, because some sisters are going to come in and repent, and they're going to be in those different positions or careers or whatever the case is, you do what you got to do while you're at work. Safety reasons, whatever the case is, you got to put on them, them big coveralls, overalls, or whatever the case is, then you do what you got to do at work. But once you clock out and you get to your car or your locker or whatever the case is, if I'm talking about specifically for the sisters, you got to put on a dress. Remember, the things that are written before time was written for our learning. On 15 to 4. Go to Esther chapter 14, verse 15. Esther chapter 14, verse 15 and 16. Because she went through some of the same things. There's nothing new under the sun. Esther chapter 14, verse 15. In the Apocrypha. Esther chapter 14, verse 14. 15. 15. Thou knowest all things, O Lord. Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous, and abhor the bed of the uncircumcised, and of all the heathen. What captivity was Esther in? You can say it out loud. Persian captivity, right? So she said uh, she hated the glory of the unrighteous, and abhorred the bed of the uncircumcised, or the bed of Artaxerxes, because that was the king, and she was the queen. And of all the heathen, right? Of all the other nations, she hated the unrighteousness of all the other nations, not just the Persians, Right? Verse 16. Verse 16. Thou knowest my necessity, for I abhor the sign of my high estate. For I hate the sign of my high estate, because she was the queen, right? Which is upon mine head. Because she had to wear a crown to signify she was the queen of Persia. Come on. In the days wherein I showed myself, uh -huh. and that I abhorred it as a menstruous rag, and that I wear it not when I am private. By myself. And she said, I did not show, I didn't wear the sign of my high state when I wasn't in a particular position. She said when she was by herself, she went back to being an Israelite. She went back to the modest apparel. She went back to the estate or the dignity of being an Israelite. That's what she did. That's what our foremother did. Likewise for us today, we got to be able to see that example and say, you know what? I need to follow that. Not make an excuse according to your will and say, well, they forced me to wear pants, so I'm going to wear it at the grocery store and everywhere else. No. You take a dress with you. When you get off of work, you change into the dress, and then you go about your day and do the rest of your, do the rest of your business. Officer Yakub. Hey, shalom, officer. Most high grace bless. Hey, um, so in that, uh, in that video that I suggested uh, last Sabbath or Sabbath before uh, about fear and doubt, 
one of the things that my rib was able to overcome was on her job, they made her wear pants uh, as a manager. And so she had to wear pants. And in our discussion, and this was before she uh, came into the, well, this is when she first came into the body. She went to them and with no fear, explained to them that this was what she had to do. And uh, corporate looked into it and said, hey, look, this is what she believes in. We see it. And because she didn't have fear of, of letting them know that she had to wear uh, skirts, no one else had ever wore a skirt on her job. So now women are able to wear skirts if that's part of their belief. All praise to the most High. All praises, man. That's a, that's a sign of your faith. That's a sign of your faith. It, it, you know, to that point, my wife did the same thing when she was working at UPS. This was 2017. You know, UPS is, is pretty liberal, but she worked in the warehouse with all the lines and all that stuff. And she was able to give, give, give them a letter. She wasn't able to work in the, near the uh, belts and all that, but they just put it in the office. Same money, same job, all that good stuff. So it's a sign of your faith, you know? And it's the same thing with Officer Hannah Knight. He's not, he may be outside, but um, same thing with him, where he's setting the precedent with wearing a beard and being a police officer. Uh, one of the other brothers, same thing. Yeah, we got all these different professions, we, we, we're setting a standard. And we're letting the other nations know, no, the black man has a standard. The black woman, the Israelite man and woman, we do have a standard. And it's not according to you. Go ahead. Yeah, we also got another sister in here that works at UPS. She, um, she works near the conveyor belt. But as soon as she gets out, every day she changes into a dress and she waits on her mother. Every time. Every time. I'm saying all praise to the most high for that thing. Because that's a righteous example that we need right there. You know? All praises. All right, go from that. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. And then, Officer Asai, I know you know what two definitions I want. You ain't got to get it, but let them know what I want. All right, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Okay, watch this. Emphasize the words that I want them to put on the screen, please. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. All right, watch this. You, okay, go to the first one first. Not modest, not modesty. Let's go to adorn first, A-D-O-R-N. All right, here we go. It says, okay, adorn, verb, which means there's action behind this word. It says to make more beautiful or attractive. Synonyms, embellish, decorate, furnish, ornament, enhance, beautify, prettify, uh, grace, enrich. All right, so read it again. In like manner. Also, that themselves. Hold on. Try it again. In like manner, also, that women adorn themselves. That women adorn themselves or make themselves more beautiful or attractive by doing what? In modest apparel. By wearing modest apparel, modest attire. Not showing everything you got up top, everything you got below, because when I was, we was in New Orleans last week. Y'all can only imagine what we saw up and down the street. It was one sister, she, uh, she was wearing, she was young, she had to be, you know, maybe 22, 23, something like that. I don't know if you remember the, the sisters at the end, the group of sisters and the, the brother yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. had the beard. So she's wearing uh, tights, leggings, right? Right, it was like shorts, short right. tight. Leggings. like biker shorts, basically. The uh, you know, cycling shorts or whatever, right? So the I forget who was teaching that first, and then I step up, and you know we was talking about modest apparel, right? So she said, "Oh no no no! Oh my husband, he 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 uh he okay with this? Because I was telling her once the men get in order, the sisters are gonna get in order." I said, "Yo, you telling me yes, your husband says it's okay for you to walk around with your butt and your camel toe out? That's he good with that? Yeah, he good with that." Because, you know, she did this. Yeah, she good with that. I said, yeah, oh, okay, okay. 
So I pulled Second Ezra 13 about getting, uh, 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 what is it, setting your house in order, right? Yeah. So that brings me to my point. The scripture says the women are not supposed to wear that which pertains to a man, right? The scripture says a woman is supposed to wear modest apparel. If the dress is not modest, you always default back to the scripture. Because we all in our repentance. And if yo if you got a dress up to your belly button, irregardless of if my husband agrees with it or not, what does the scripture say? Can we read the scripture again? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Also, that the women started from the top because you cutting off. In like manner also that women adorn themselves. Husbands, listen to the scripture, man. Read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves. Make themselves more beautiful by doing what? In modest apparel. By putting on modest apparel. Because I know we've had, not, not lately, I'll praise to the most side, but I know we've had that before. We had that at the old school. Sister, dress up, of course, not with us no more. Dress up to the belly button, tight as all hell, showing everything you got. Oh, my husband cool with it. But God said it's not. God said that's not good. God said that's unlawful. Come on. Husbands, y'all got to be able to be a hedge of protection for the wives because you never know. They, they may think it's cool or it's okay or whatever, and you not even, they don't even realize, oh, you can, you can see everything in the back. Oh, you can see my, my uh, 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 give me something. Yeah, you can see my print. Come on, man. What is, what's wrong with you? Her body is for you. Your body is for her. You wouldn't let him walk around in his boxes. I would hope not, right? This is quiet. The brother's quiet, too. <laughs> what you say? He don't want to say that on the mic. Yeah. I'm going to let you have that. Go to, now get, a, get modest. Get modest. So God said, modest apparel. All right, modest. Unassuming or moderate in the estimation of one's ability or achievement. That ain't what I want. Uh, mo okay, let's go to uh, number two. Relatively moderate, limited, or small. Moderate, fair. Uh, let me find some that are. Number three. Dre thank you. Dre uh, of, a, of a woman. Dressing or behaving so as to avoid impropriety or indecency. You're going to have to look that one up on the side. Impropriety or indecency. Especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. Because that's all we saw at the Essence Fest. Women saying they godly and they Christians and all that, and they ain't doing nothing to avoid attracting sexual attention. It says of clothing, not revealing or emphasizing the figure. For you single sisters, you don't have to feel like you got to show everything to try to get a brother. All right? D uh, it says synonyms. Decent, seemly, demure, sober, severe, uh, proper, discreet, delicate, chaste, virtuous. Virtuous. The opposite of all of this is abomination. That's the scriptural antonym to modest, to, to modest, or modesty. All right, so let's read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel mm -hmm. with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So it's not saying you can't have, um, you know, you can't wear jewelry, you can't, you know, get decked out and stuff like that. When you read Ezekiel 16, that's how we, that's how we got down. Gold in the hair and all that stuff, that's how we got down. But the Lord is saying something very specific. Read on. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. But God is being very specific in saying that there's a priority that you got to have. Your priority should be, how do I become godly? How do I make sure? 
keeping in, in context of what we're talking about, how do I make sure that my attire is godly? How do I make sure that I'm teaching my children to be godly in attire? Fringes, modest apparel, modest dresses, head covering when you're reading the scriptures. Uh, for the men, having your heads uncovered. All that goes into the dress code. All of that goes into the attire. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.